Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Design with Ruzbe. Continuing with CSWA practice problems, today we'll work on question 3.4. Let's take a look at this question. So in this question, unit of measurement is millimeter gram second. Like always, we need to ensure we are using the same unit of measurement in solid work setting. Now, looking at this geometry, clearly this is a symmetric geometry. So this is a great opportunity for us to use mirror command to make modeling much faster. Now, in this question, you can see the front view with some dimensions shown in it. You can also see the right view with the overall length of the geometry shown in it. My preference is to divide this geometry into four pieces. I'm going to focus on the front view. I'm going to model only quarter of the geometry. And then after that, I'm going to use extruded bus to make it like a 3D model. And eventually, I'm going to choose a mirror command to make the final geometry. So with this introduction, let's jump into SOLIDWORKS and start modeling this part. In SOLIDWORKS, first thing first, we need to check unit of measurement. And you can see in the right corner that we have millimeter gram second, which is a correct unit of measurement. So we are good to go. Now, I want to start with a front plane. So I click on the sketch tab, click on the sketch command, and then here I'm going to have a front plane. Now here, let's first make two lines. I'm going to click on line command and I'm going to choose center line and in here I'm going to make one horizontal and one vertical line. These are basically the lines that helps me to divide the geometry into four pieces. I'm going to also make another center line right here and the angle between this line and the horizontal line is just 45 degree. Okay. Now let's make a 2D sketch here. To do this I click on line command. I start from the center or origin of the geometry. I go up, then an angle, going to the left, going up, and going to right. Okay? Awesome. First of all, this angled line, I want it to be parallel with this line. So I hold control, I select the second line, and from the options, I'm going to choose parallel constraint. Okay? Next, I know that the width of the angled feature or the rib is 1.5 millimeter according to the geometry. So I click on a smart dimension because this is only half of that 1.5 millimeter. So I click on this line, I click on the center line, and this distance should be 1.5 divided by 2. Okay? Just make sure that the center you actually selected this line. In this case, you see. This is a projection of the line, which is not correct. Let me remove this. I select the smart dimension. I select this line, this line, and this is a distance, right? This distance should be 1.5 divided by 2. Okay, awesome. Next, I know that the width of the geometry in this area should be 1.5 millimeters. So I click on this line. I click on the top line, and this width should be 1.5 millimeter. Also, according to the front view, we know that the gap that we have here in this area is 2 mm. Because I'm only modeling half of that, the distance between the vertical line and this vertical line should be 2 divided by 2, which is 1 mm. Next, the distance between the center point and the horizontal line should be 2.5 mm. So I set 2.5 mm for this. And finally, the distance between this horizontal line, let's call it line number two, and this line should be two millimeters. So this is two millimeter. Awesome. So now you can see that we have a fully defined geometry, but it, this is only half of quarter of the geometry. In order to model another or next half, I'm going to use a mirror command. So from sketch, I'm going to choose mirror entities and then here for the entities I'm going to choose this line this line this one this one this and this and for mirror line I'm going to choose this 45 degree angled line and now you can see the preview click on OK and now we have the geometry awesome all we need to add here is just the fillet radius according to the front view we have 0.25 millimeter radius in the corners. So what I can do from a sketch, I can select a sketch fillet. And then here I'm going to choose 0.25 millimeter. 
and then I'm gonna select corners this area this one this one this one this area this corner this this and finally this so all these corners are selected click on OK and that's it that's the final geometry now next step is easy just extruding this part so what I can do from feature let's let's click on OK first from feature I click on extruded bus and the contour is automatically selected just change the direction and then here I'm gonna change it to 110 that's the overall length click on OK and that's it so now you can see that we modeled quarter of the geometry next step is easy we just use mirror command and we're done so to do this from feature I'm gonna select mirror command and then here you have the opportunity to choose two different planes so for the first plane I'm gonna choose this bottom surface for the secondary mirror plane I'm gonna select this and for the feature to mirror click on the model tree and then use extruded bus feature the feature that we actually just made click on it and now you can see the preview of the mirror command click on OK and that's it that's the final geometry now all we need to do is to make a hole in the center of the geometry and we are done to make that hole click on the sketch click on the sketch command I'm gonna choose this surface click on circle command and then here make a circle according to the front view the diameter of this circle should be 2 millimeter click on the smart dimension and then here click on the circle and this diameter should be 2 millimeter click on feature and from the options we have click on extruded cut now here you have two options you can either choose through all which is basically extending the cut all the way to the back surface or you can choose blind and then add the lengths in this case through all is ok so I click on ok and that's it so that's the final geometry and we're done next step is to check the total volume and make sure that this is a correct model let's go back to the question and find the total volume in the question you can see the total volume the total volume is 9921 cubic millimeters let's go back to SOLIDWORKS and check the total volume for our model in SOLIDWORKS in order to find the total volume you can click on evaluate tab and then from here you select mass properties and then here you can check the total volume as you can see the total volume here is 9920.85 cubic millimeters if you round up this number you're gonna get exactly the same number as shown in a question which means that our model is correct and there's no problem with it okay awesome I think that's it for today that's a wrap for this video I hope you enjoyed this video if you have any comment or question please leave comments down below Thanks again for watching. My name is Ruzbe. Hope to see you again soon in the next videos.